Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another um, weekly edition of Condo Insider. I'm your host, Raylene Tenno, and I am so pleased to have with me um, Ina K. I don't want to butcher your last name. <laughs> um, she has created something really unique, and it's all related to benchmarking. And um, benchmarking started a year ago. Well, it was we did a lot of training on it starting in February of last year. But the first reporting period was June of last year for the buildings that are 100,000 square feet. And, um, and but there's um, a lot of buildings that have not even sent their information in. So um, I know some resident managers were kind of struggling with, um, part of it is finding the time to sit down and gather all that information and then to input it into the um, benchmarking uh, platform. Um, it is, I, I did do it took me a whole night to set up one section of it. And then I went, oh, there's another section. And I kind of like went, okay, that's enough. I'm sure with this long enough. But it was a whole evening of it. And um, so, um, you know, I had created um, a, a, a little um, entity that can really take that burden off of the con building owners and co or condominiums of the reporting function. She can take that and do it for the condominium and report it in. So, um, Ina. Um, um, she's going to share her PowerPoint, um, but there's a lot of um, sharing um, and, and information that she can provide to to the condominium if they use her services, which um, to me is a plus for any condominium. So thank you for joining me, Ina. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So let's get started with your PowerPoint. Okay, great. Perfect. So hi, everyone. My name is Ina Kovacheva, and I'm the founder of ArcDash. Um, so we've created this platform to provide uh, building insights um, as to the performance of your building. Next, please. Um, so as it was mentioned earlier, um, there's this legislation that's actually all over the United States, uh, and it's currently in 23 states, um, including Hawaii. And um, What's happening is they're requiring these buildings to be benchmarked. Um, and uh, the states that are sort of ahead of this game are um, first requiring benchmarking, but then they're saying, okay, now that we have your data and we have um, the way your buildings are performing, uh, we're going to have to reduce the usage or find tell you to find ways to reduce the usage so that your buildings can be more sustainable uh, and we can do more for the environment. Um, so that is sort of how um, ArcDash was started, um, and that's that's sort of what we're trying to do, help um, owners uh, to manage their performance uh, and upload that data. Next, please. How do you work with the condos to get that data? <laughs> so um, there's different ways, uh, but basically we can either uh, work with condos to connect to uh, HECO, so we can actually get the data directly from uh, Hawaii Electric, or we could connect their building management systems and uh, just continually have the data so it's real time. Um, and then they can not only submit it annually and look at it once a year, but they could actually see it um, you know, every month or every day, whenever they want, to sort of get a better idea of how it's performing and what they could do to, to reduce usage or do, do some improvements to do better. Yeah, I think the periodic looking at their data is good because <clears throat> you never know when there might be some unusual surge in the usage that would be unusual, but that's also a red flag for something's going on. Exactly. Yes. And uh, our our goal is to actually provide alerts so you, we would be able to tell you if something is, um, you know, compared to last year, uh, you know, it's way higher and then maybe there's something you can do to check and see what's going on. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the PowerPoint. Right. So this is uh, the Bill 22, which is specifically for Honolulu. Um, and it's requiring, like you mentioned, that buildings over 100,000 square feet uh, have to provide the benchmarking by June 30th, 2023, which was last June. And now buildings that are 50,000 square feet or larger must begin their reporting by June 30th, 30th of this year. Um, so they also have to report, report, and then even smaller buildings that are twenty five thousand square feet have to report by next year, June of next year. Is that again? It's twenty five thousand and lower. Yes. So yes. that would be the last. Well, that will include all the buildings after that, right? 
Yes. Um, and of course, if if buildings fail to report this, then there is fines. Um, so, um, you know, there there's fines each day that they're, they're, they haven't reported their usage. Yeah, and they're pretty hefty. They're not small kind fines. They're pretty, pretty penalizing. Um, yeah, the state is interested in, in sort of getting this uh, program going. Okay. So once you get the, um, you're able to access the data from the condo, then wh where do you go from there? Um, so I, we can actually, we can show you in the next slide. So um, technically we need to get specific data, uh, very specific data from the condo. So it's not just their electrical usage, water usage, but they also have to tell us sort of occupancy um, and a little bit more data that we can then enter into the portfolio manager which is the platform that they're supposed to use to um, to report this data. Uh, but we also we actually include this data into our platform because we want to provide additional insights uh, into the performance. So we want to make it easier and more intuitive to use than um, the actual uh, portfolio manager platform because as you mentioned, it's a little bit not not so much user intuitive, so um, it takes a long time. So we're hoping once we set this up for the condos, then each year it will be just a click of a button to submit the data uh, and be able to just review the information. So for the condos that have not set up their portfolio manager, this is a, a perfect opportune time to reach out to Ina because she can set up your portfolio manager. And yeah, I would be happy to do that. Yeah, and it, and it is very time consuming. Um, there's a lot of questions they ask. Some of it even have to do with the parking, parking your parking spaces. Um, which, um, you know, if you're not prepared for it, it's kind of can throw you a curve. <laughs> yes. But yes. it's for all utilities. So you've got to do it for HECO, for water supply, and if you have gas, right? Yes. So it's all three utilities that you have to set up a separate portfolio thing. So you got to kind of like do it three times if you have all three of those. So it is very time consuming. Exactly. So let's go back to the next slide. Yes, perfect. So our goal is to really um, be able to enable building owners to make data-driven decisions that result in more and more efficient and healthier buildings. And it would ultimately lead to co cost savings and healthier occupants. Yeah, next slide, please. Um, so this is just a very quick look at our platform. We actually try to make it a little bit more user intuitive by adding uh, sort of pictures so you can see if you have, um, you know, multiple multiple buildings or multiple areas that you need to monitor. It's sort of easy to search through. Uh, next slide. Um, and then this is sort of our dashboard for uh, the monitoring. So once we once we set it up, you'd be able to see your electricity usage throughout the years and it's interactive. So you can just scroll through um, any particular period as well. Um, and then this data is the data we, we export and bring into the portfolio manager. Next, please. So in addition, we actually want to give additional uh, benefit. So once we have the data, we want to provide additional insight and tell you how you compare to perhaps other condos in the areas and of similar sizes of similar usages um, so that you sort of are able to understand what that usage means, um, not only in terms of money, but sort of in terms of your energy usage. And it will allow you to see if you can optimize in some areas. Um, so energy and water as well. Next. How have you seen it in other jurisdictions, you know, like here at Hawaii, you know, when LED became the, became the energy efficient um, light bulb, I mean, everybody went out and replaced a lot of their light bulbs with LEDs, you know, and then now um, some of the condos um, or even townhouses, they're um, changing or upgrading to um, solar um, wherever they can. Um, some even for their water, some have um, done some changes in their, um, for their landscaping and how they water. Um, I think some condos even went in on a, on a separate meter that for, because you get charged for whatever water comes through that meter, but there's another meter that can get installed that is not like what's going into your pipes, your drinking water. It's the stuff that goes to the 
because that is on a different charge. Um, so that some some buildings have done that and they made um, they got their money back off the cost of that installation already. Well, in in like less than a year, you know. Um, so how is it going to impact a lot of us going forward now that this reporting is in? You know, like a lot of condos, like I said, they've converted to solar, um, and so what is the city now going to do? Like how much more energy efficient can a condo go? Yeah, I mean, it's all part of the legislation, right? And I think it's going to be one step at a time. Um, so first, I'm sure the state, at least I know in several states on the East Coast, the, the state goes, well, okay, now you have to reduce, let's say by 10%. And the next year, you know, 15%, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, because they're still, they're creating all these new, um, equipment, new ways to sort of save on energy appliances, et cetera. Um, and, and they're also providing, there, there are options for funding. Um, so they are trying to help condos to sort of upgrade those systems and really help them to become more energy efficient. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that's, that's sort of the next step. Yeah. Whatever funding that you have, let us know, because I mean, everybody's getting killed with just the maintenance fee increases. You know, and then to have, you know, a couple of years down the road, which maintenance fee increases are still going to be prevalent, going to be still the hot topic. Um, and then you got benchmarking and then they're throwing in loop. Well, you need to do some energy reduction or change out this to be more energy efficient. It's like, how can we put that in to our budget, you know? Um, and what's the payout going to be um, on our maintenance fees? Is it really going to make you know, that much of an energy savings where it's going to impact the maintenance fees. So that's going to be a, that's going to be a tough, that's going to be a struggle going forward when that time comes. Yeah. And our goal is really to help uh, building owners with that decision, right? If we're able to provide all these sort of um, possible ways to get funding, if, you know, there is uh, a way to improve the building itself or even just providing data so that perhaps the, the condo can change the occupancy behavior. So, you know, if you are using a lot of electricity, um, perhaps there is an email that goes out to, to all the users that say, hey, you know, let's try and to, to reduce this energy usage at least from this time period to this time period and sort of see what effect that has on the, on the energy usage of the building. And perhaps that's a way to sort of save and stay on track with these demands that are um, imposed by the state. Right, right. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. <laughs> Jenna. Yeah, I think this is sort of what, what we were talking about. We really are trying to automate the benchmarking process so that it's not um, it's not really difficult for the condos. They don't have to really spend too much time every year um, to kind of gather that data and um, really be caught up, caught by surprise because it, you know if you're only doing it once a year, you don't really you're just submitting the data. You're not really uh, being proactive. Um, so by automating this and kind of having this data available to them, you know, every month, they, they're able to stay on track, uh, and, you know, maybe change, uh, make some changes so they could, they could reduce their usage or, uh, really stay on track. So on here, it says you do, um, it, that it's uh, one of the actual strategies would be a building audit. Is that something you would do, or they would have to work with, um, Hawaii Energy to do something like that? Um, we could provide that as a separate service um, because we would have to, uh, you know, it has to be done by mechanical engineers and actually audit their systems. Um, but that's that's also a possibility. We've been asked by a lot of condos to to sort of have that feature as well. Wow, cool. That'll be interesting. Yeah. So why? Yeah, why is this all happening now? It's just like, you know. It just seems so condos are getting everything slapped at them at the same time. You know, we've got insurance, we've got, you know, just disasters we got to be prepared for, you know, um, like a never ending. Can we take get a breather for every, every once in a while? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're I still mean, with the fire. People are still battling over the pipe replacements, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's not just condos, it's for all buildings. Um, so everyone sort of has to go through this. I mean, there are some exceptions, of course, um, but 
most buildings would have to submit their data and improve. So what do you think is going to, is the next step with the city and county? Um, yeah, I, it's my best guess, but I think they're the next step, once they have the data, they're going to ask for some reduction. And I know because, um, I know Hawaii is actually on the, they're sort of a visitor on this funding program. It's called the PACE program, uh, which actually provides the funding for upgrading systems, et cetera. And they've been sort of monitoring how this works in other states. I think California, Missouri, and Florida are the states that are sort of implementing that right now. And Hawaii is sort of watching over. So are you talking about the CPA, sir? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it's passing through the legislature. Yeah. I, yeah. And I've been kind of watching that too, because that's, that'll be a great opportunity for, um, for condo buildings to get some additional financing, especially when exactly. it's, and it's, and it's only used for energy efficiency type of um, capital improvements, right? Um, yes. So like I was telling someone, I go, if you had to, like, if you had to change your elevator, you're going to guarantee you're going to have to upgrade your electricity, you know? So those might be the ones qualifying. Um, for quite, or if you wanted to install solar, you're gonna. I know there's going to be some upgrades in electricity that you're gonna have to do, because our buildings are so old. You know, the majority of our buildings are so old that guaranteed they're going to have electrical um, upgrades that's going to be required when they change these things out. So I'm really looking forward to that signature, governor's signature on CPACER financing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, likewise. But I, I do think that probably the bigger buildings are the ones that are going to have to um, perhaps reduce their energy usage more so as this sort of gets ramped up. Um, because my guess is that they probably have the resources to do that uh, versus the smaller buildings, which, um, again, like you mentioned, might have to ramp up fees and um, some other things to to get this done. One of the things that I encourage the condos to do is to create two separate um um, portfolio manager accounts. One would be for, because uh, they have two reporting elements. One is for, um, um, or try to separate common elements from the unit information. Because you kind of don't have a much control of the unit usage because they pay their own bill. Um, all you can do is make the suggestions, you know. You need to conserve, you know, as much as you can. But, you know, if you've got someone that runs their AC 24-7, even when they're not home, you know, what are you supposed to do? You can't house rule violation them, you know. Um, but um, that way, at least they can monitor um, what they can monitor or control what they can monitor, which would be the common elements, you know. Exactly. So I hope some of them did that because th that would make a lot, put it put it to really make, it'll make more sense. Um, and they can really see where, the outside of the units where they can um, do some energy efficiency improvements. Yes. Or check into it. There is the, um, I spoke to this condominium association that actually sort of did that and they separated their, uh, their water. So they were able to see, they have a water fountain in front of the building. Uh, and once they figured out how, how much that water fountain was using and they would, you know, cut it off just, just at night, they would stop it at night. They saved so much money. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that kind of, those kinds of improvements are um, sort of what we're after as well. Yeah, I know another condo, they had one too, and they they, they turned theirs off. So this was a couple of years ago, and they were so, they were shocked. I mean, it was like, for them, it was like, and they had a, I think it was quite a big fountain. Um, a lot of owners didn't like it, but when they realized it, because they go, oh, we like coming home and hearing the water, blah, blah, blah. But when I started to see the savings, they were like, holy smokes, you know. But it was exactly. six-figure savings for them, which was shocking. Yes, it's significant. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um, so um, how can people reach out to you? Uh, yeah, so our website is www.arc-.com. Um, there is a contact form or I can also uh, send, give you my email and they can reach out to me directly um, and my phone number as well. Okay. All right. Um, so you have any um, thoughts, closing thoughts for our condos with um, tackling this benchmarking issue? I know for me, number one is just to call Ina. <laughs> you don't have a choice in it because it's, it's a city and county um, ordinance. 
that is um it's like mandatory it's there's like no ifs ands or buts about it um and um and i know the people in the office are really good like if you have a problem or a question with setting up the portfolio manager they're pretty good with uh, working with you um and um giving you that tra- and they do have trainings um because i know i got another email for another training but um they're really good with walking you through the steps they're patient um will, and you know will help you as much as they can uh, they won't come out to the building and do it for you but <laughs> but they will certainly will help you over the phone um so what are some of your other thoughts about this movement on benchmarking yeah, I mean, I know it might seem daunting at first, um, and perhaps uh, it's a little bit scary. But I think in the long run, it's um, it, it really could could be really better for the buildings, and it will be better for the buildings and the occupants. Um, so just you know, getting um, getting the data out is the first step, um, but then reducing the usage and sort of figuring out what those necessary improvements are, if they need to be made um, or what needs to be made to kind of reduce the usage, um, I think, I think would be, would benefit um, the condo owners. I know, I know there's a lot of things like the fire thing and uh, a lot of increases in fees, um, but this doesn't really have to be um, that, that fee intensive, at least not in the beginning. And I'm sure there's also exceptions as well. So for the government. So I think one of the biggest consumptions in a, in a, in a, in even in a single family, um, according to Hawaii energy, it's like the hot water heater takes up the majority of energy. Um, and I know single family homes, a lot of people have put timers on their, on their heaters. Um, and, um, but in condos might be a little bit more problematic to do a, to do a heater. Um, but, um, we can only look for new improvements in hot water heaters, especially those small ones, that you only, you only have limited space, so you're stuck with that small one, the little low boys, you know, um, and they're in that small, tiny little space. <laughs> yeah, it's true, but I mean, a lot of the a lot of the big energy sucks from buildings are like you mentioned, like elevators and you know, um, like AC and and things of that sort that. And, and even like the common ele- elements. Um, so if you could sort of manage those and figure out what those improvements are and what kind of gains you get from that, I think that's definitely a plus as well. Okay, cool. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're nearing our end and um, I wanna thank you, Ina, for being on the show. Um, when we um, get the re- actual recording back, um, I'll email it out to the people. It'll be uploaded onto YouTube. And um, I'll make sure when I email it, I, I include your um, your contact information. Yep, that sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. This was really great. Yeah, thank you, Ina. I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Looking forward to the success of this. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.